Sorry if this video is a little bit fuzzy. This is from a live stream, so the resolution wasn't that great. And I forgot to lock the focus on the cube on the balls again. Uh, but it's not too bad, and I think the lesson in this one is pretty important. This is a pretty standard break shot. I'm going to hit one of these center balls full. And just This is just a low ball to try and go to the side, straight to the side rail. And I think I get a good result. Yeah, nice firm stroke. If you play that back, you can play the back slow motion. You can probably see the cue ball kind of curve a little bit. And that draw, that low below center takes and draws it over there. The first shot, I've got a real good result. There's no two balls touching. Uh, actually, these two balls here are kind of close. That's the only trouble that needs to be f solved in this rack. I've got a break ball here. It's very possible that something else could get moved into break ball position. Based on where the cue ball is, I'm going to shoot this seven ball. Now, a lot of people might just hit it real soft and shoot the two ball next. But I think in this instance, there's three balls up table. It's going to be real easy to get these two and then use this nine to get back down table and accomplish something. I don't think I need to save these up table balls as insurance or anything. Everything's open wide enough. I'm going to be, I'm, I'm trusting that I am going to handle this. And so for that reason, I want to get rid of the up table balls right away. So I'm just going two rails straight at this 15. I think it's a 15. Yeah, up in this upper corner. Now that ball is already where I need to be to shoot this ball on the side. So let's not get fancy with position. And now I can just go to this rail and out here, and I'll have a very good shot on this. So after shooting this ball, it's kind of a three-shot sequence. So I talk about that a lot. Get rid of these balls. What I can see now, I just took a look. What did I look at? After I shoot the nine, I need my cue ball over here because these balls go there. And so if I can get a low angle on those balls to bump these two, then I'm golden and everything's solved and should be a piece of cake. So let's come over and try to get straight in on this ball on the side. Get pretty close. So now I'm going to take another look of where exactly I want to be. And I'm looking at this shot line to the 14. I'm trying to draw a straight line. And so what I'm doing is I want the cue ball to hit this rail and off, which guarantees that I'm below that shot line. So I've actually got to use a little bit of inside English. I don't want it to go behind that six. So this is perfect. And I've already, no, I'm going to go look now. If I can tap the nine ball full, I can see the eight ball. If I don't, I'll probably have a shot on this 12, which is going to move over here. So that's this plan. That'll work. If the nine ball, if the cue ball had come off the nine, I would I would have had a shot on the twelve. But I knew I was going to get this window, and this is ideal. So notice, what do you do? How do you how do you run a racket straight pool? You take care of your problems immediately. Up table balls gone, tied up balls gone, rack is solved. All the balls are open. Now I uh, this is kind of an issue. Once the thirteen's gone. One of, this, one of these balls goes, goes here. So that's what I'm thinking about right now. Maybe it's not quite fully solved yet, is, in other words, is what I'm saying. So I'm going to shoot this 8 and just bring the cue ball back out here. What I'm thinking is I want this angle on the 9 to bump these balls, the two balls, an insurance ball. Pretty straightforward. I come a little bit too far. I could shoot the 12 and do something else. In fact, I, I'm taking a look at that. What I'm thinking about right now is shooting the 12. You bounce off the rail and you get, here's the shot line. Uh, let me draw my line a little bit better. Here's the shot line to the 11. You stay below that, then I can bump the three. That clears the pocket for both of these balls to go. I hope that made sense, but I look at it and decide, no, I got a much better shot. Here, just shoot the five and draw into that 10 ball. I might make the 10 into a break shot. But regardless, I've got two insurance balls, the two that way and this ball. I don't, can't tell what that is, a third, whatever this ball is, this way. So this turned out ideal, and this is the point where I want to talk about the lesson of this rack. Avoid temptation. Now, in the past, the way I would have approached this rack 
is I would have said to myself, let's clear these lower balls. Then I can come up table somehow for this ball. And then I can shoot, then I can come over and shoot the nine ball this way, the five ball back this way, and come up here for my break shot. That's a lot of spaghetti. Did that make sense? In other words, what I used to do was shoot the low balls. If, if you draw a line across the, the head spot of the rack, kind of, you've got, I've got three balls that are below it and three balls that are above it. What I used to do is clear the low balls and then try and maneuver these upper balls. Well, that's a lot of real estate that you've got to move around. I don't know if the nine ball goes past this five ball here. I had a lot of trouble with it, and for good reason. It's not the best way to go about it. Still, what I might have done in the old days is shoot this nine in the side, then shoot this ball, then this 14, and then use the two ball by either coming straight up or this way so that I can use this ball to get on the five. The whole, the whole point is that I, I used to re say that this five ball is my key ball. Here's the shot line to the five. So you want to be low on that below that shot line to either make your cue ball go this way or draw it straight up to get on the six ball break shot. So the question is, how do you get on the key ball? What's the good K2? Get rid of this ball. Get rid of the upper balls. Use the lower balls. And even the way that I run this, this rack, I don't agree with. Let me go ahead and let it play and I'll, uh, I'll talk over it. The best key ball is not the five. This is the best key ball. And part of the reason is you have two K2s. Here's the shot line for that key ball. Both of those balls are already below the shot line. So you can get over there and, and get, be below the shot line for this nine and come around your six ball to get on the break shot. That's the best pattern. So I almost do it right. I'm playing position for the, oh, I called it the nine, but I don't think it's a nine, it's something else. Just now I played position for this ball to shoot both of these and use these to come up here to, to still use the five as the key ball. The better pattern would have been to shoot this ball and come up here for the five ball now because then it's easy to roll forward and shoot these two to get on this stripe. Make sense? I hope that makes sense. So I, I'm still not quite doing it the best way. And I, I get there, but I didn't have to. You can come too far. You can end up straight in. It's not a good pattern because it's hard to get the right angle on this five ball. You'll get the right angle a good percentage of the time, but not often enough. Whereas if you use these two balls as the K2 and shoot this one as your key ball, you're going to get that right close to 100% of the time. And even the, look, even with that five ball, I came too far. I went to the rail and out, and it was, it was hard to judge the speed because I had a, because of the angle that I had. Anyway... I hope that lesson made sense, and it's one I'm really taking to heart. And it, it, it dovetails with what I've said in previous racks of the week where I've said, work top down, climb down the ladder. So if you keep that in mind, then you'll shoot that, this nine in the side, shoot this ball, this ball, get rid of the top balls first, and then do the bottom balls. Okay, I've got a very slight angle here. Um, I'm not sure what ball I'm going to have next, but I've got to use right English and really cheat the pocket and pound it and go into that corner ball and see what I can get. Now the, the cue ball marries to that ball on the way to the rail and so they bump and separate, which is awesome because now I've, I've got kind of a cut shot on this, but there's, there's nothing to do with the, key, the cue ball. There's no way to scratch. Just put a nice follow stroke on it, medium firm, and you're going to open those balls like a flower. Eh, yeah, kind of like a flower, which is a hint at what you're going to see in Rack of the Week number 100. So stay tuned for next week. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week on Rack of the Week. Bye.